going to show you how to make some medical masks. Um, what I have here is two different fabrics. This is a t-shirt fabric and this is like a pillowcase fabric. And the reason I'm using these two is because the University of Cambridge did a study and found that the balance between um, breathability and filtering is these two fabrics combined. Now, you certainly could cut up a t-shirt and a pillowcase, but you don't have to do that. These fabrics are basically um, what you find in the fabric store under quilting fabrics. It's a thin cotton. And you'll be able to tell when you feel it that it's, it's similar to a pillowcase. And the t-shirt fabric is under cotton knit. These are both 100% cotton. And so what I have here is two squares that are um, seven by eight inches. And the first thing you wanna do is put these two squares face together and then pin them like that. And it's your eight inch side that you're pinning And then what you're going to do is the sides that you didn't pin, you're just going to run through the sewing machine and run a seam across both ends. And then once you've done that, you're going to turn it right side out and iron it so that you end up with something like this. And this, I'm going to show you how to get the pipe cleaner in because the pipe cleaner is used to create a seal across the nose and eyes so that air isn't escaping that way because it defeats the purpose of the filter if it's happening that way. So what you want to do, now if you look, I have different kinds of fabrics here. So some fabrics are going to have a different top of the mask. So obviously this fabric, you want the fabric to be right side up, so you want the top of the mask to be there. So figure out where the top of your mask is and I need to thread this needle which means I need my other glasses Sometimes, let's try cutting this again. There we go. Okay, so what you're going to do is line up the edge of the fabric um, with the edge of your foot and just run run a seam down like that so if you see that it's created kind of a pocket it's similar to you know what you might think of when you think of a uh, curtain rod. So what we have here is pipe cleaners and to make these little pieces what you want to do is fold a pipe cleaner in half. They're about 12 inches when you get the pipe cleaners. And so this gives you a six inch piece. 
And then what you want to do is make sure, take this little tiny point and fold it over once, and then fold it over one more time, squeezing that point as close to the inside as you can because you won't be able to slip this through the mask if you have this little cut point. And this is a perfect thing that if you have kids in the house that they can help with, that they can do. So now you have this little pipe cleaner. And then this is the side that goes against the face. So what I like to do is put the pipe cleaner through this side to give as much cushioning from the cotton with the wire on the bridge of the nose as possible. And you just slide it in there and work it through. And you want to make sure you have um, even, even spaces on both sides. So play around with it until it's pretty much in the center. And then what you want to do is you'll feel where the wire is and you want to just put a few stitches on either side so that it stays in the middle. Because when this thing is washed, you don't want this wire moving around because that changes the seal. Forwards, backwards. Then we can cut it. Sometimes it makes a little bit of a mess on the back. Okay, and then do the other side. And you just want to go down to the seam that you have here. So this is what we have now. We have our wire in, and now we have this flat piece. We have ironing in this pattern, and it's really important to do the ironing because otherwise it's, it's very difficult to sew it if you don't do the ironing. So the next thing that you want to do is take, put your top at the top where the wire is, and fold it in half. You're going to need a very hot iron for this. This is a cork back placemat that I have here, and that's fine to iron on because they're heat resistant. Um, or you might need to take it to an ironing board. You just want to iron that, and what you're looking for is this crease in the center, and what we're doing is making the pleats. So once you do it in the center, open it up, and fold both halves towards the center. And then you want to iron, make sure that your both layers of cotton are lined up properly. And you want to iron a crease here. And the crease on the other side. Then open it up to the front and you want to take your wire and put it at the bottom. And what you're going to do is pinch this pleat and put it halfway over the next piece of fabric. And then you're going to iron that. And you're going to feel that there's a fold underneath there where, where it was pinched. And you're going to go halfway up that and you should feel that it lines right up with the pleat under the bottom. And do the same thing one more time so that you have three pleats. And then what I do so that when I'm adding the straps, these stay, is I take pins, well, actually, I need to iron that reverse side too. Okay, They're very hot, so be careful. So what you want is to line these up and stick these pins in.
There was a point where I tried just sewing it and basting it without the pins. That really didn't work too well because then the pleats would open up as I was sewing. And then I ended up with one width on one side of the mask and it would be a different width on the other side. So these pins, you know, they're shortcuts, but I wouldn't take shortcuts on this. All right, so we've got pins on one side. And then we want to do the pins on the other. You don't want to do them too close to the edge because when we sew our straps, you don't want the foot of your, you know, you want to do them in about that far because you don't want the foot of the sewing machine to be running over the head of the pin. So this fold lines up with this little piece on the bottom. So you can actually feel them lining up properly. All right. So there we've got our pleats for the mask. Looks like that on this side. You can cut all these little strings off. I'm a messy sewer. I end up with a lot of strings, mainly because I don't sew all the time. I only sew when I need to. So I end up things with caught everywhere. I'm sure there's people better at this than I am. But at the end of the day, it works. So that's all that really matters. So this is a strap. And what you need is bias tape. But because these are straps, you don't have to worry about cutting the strap on the bias. You can just, uh, when you're cutting it and you have your fabric folded, just cut an inch and a half wide piece straight up the bolt across the width of your bolt. And what you'll end up with, if you have a fabric that's 45 inches wide, you'll end up with a 45 inch strap, which is perfect. And this is what it needs to look like when it's ironed. So this is what you'll end up with. You have this inch and a half wide strip I'm going to cut these little hairy frayed things off. Now if you have a bias tape tool, that does make life easier. But I'm going to assume that people don't have that. And I'm going to show you just how to iron this. Which is a little tedious. But my mom does it with a broken arm with her left hand in the cast. And she's left handed so I think you guys can figure this out. So what you do, fold it in half and iron. See, so I'm just running it right down the center. My iron is very hot. I don't have any steam in it because I don't think it helps to try to sew wet fabric. All right, so then once you have your crease in the middle, unfold it. And this is the part that's a little tricky that might take some practice. So then what you want to do is fold half into the center and fold the other half into the center. Like that. And run your iron over this while you're continuing to fold these pieces into the center. does take a little bit of practice to do this. If you have a bias tape tool, that's definitely an easier way to do it. 
You can order them on Amazon, although I found that when I ordered one, it's taking weeks to get here, so we're just doing it this way until it comes. You can also buy bias tape if you just don't want to do this. But the bias tape is, you would need three or four dollars for one mask worth of bias tape that you buy. And I think that really increases the cost. It's much cheaper just to iron the fabric like this. But if you're not, if you're more concerned about time than money than buy the bias tape, and then what you want is double fold bias tape. Single fold is just the centers like this folded down. Double fold is what we're going to do when we fold it in half again and iron it again. Like I said, this is tedious. Sometimes I just sit in iron straps and don't do anything else just so they're ready and I don't have to do this in the middle of the process. Or my mom will sit in iron straps. Okay, and the last step to doing this is to take the whole thing and fold it in half again so that you end up with these two tucked in and then this folded into the center so you end up with your little strap. And what ironing does, you'll see in a minute when we attach the straps to the mask, that this makes it a lot easier to feed these straps through the sewing machine in a way that they're not going to come apart or fray in the laundry or anything like that. Don't worry if they don't stay closed. As long as those creases are in there, it'll be easy to feed it through the machine. Even if they open back up after you iron them. Okay, so that's how you make these straps. That's how you iron them. Now we're going to attach it to the mask. So I have this little zigzaggy stitch on my sewing machine. And it's the number 17. And you'll see how this works. I just like it. I just like it because it um, it's this one and it goes across the width of the, the strap nice. So what you want to do is figure out where the center of your strap is. And the center of your strap is going to be this little fold right here on the mask. And so what you do is put that there, kind of fold it over. And wherever the start of where it's going to go through the machine is, you just want to stick one pin so that you don't forget to attach your mask as you're going through. And then I set the mask there and I get my things. If your fabric has these little fray things on the end, just cut those off so they don't get stuck in your machine. And we're going to tie knots on the ends of these so it doesn't have to be super perfect. All right, so you make sure you're folded in the right way here, that everything's folded over, and you use this hand to make sure that it stays folded. And what I do is I put my finger in between, and I hold it like that, and then I use this hand to make sure that it guides through straight.
take your pen out. And what you want to do is make sure that your pleats are folded the right way. And you're going to lay this inside the fold. And with the pins in, it'll stay pretty good. Just make sure that it's tucked in there right. And if you give just a little bit of tension on here, it lines it up well. Uh, depending on your sewing machine, you might actually, as it hits the mask, need to go back here and hold on to the strap to pull it through a little if it bogs down. So don't keep your pressure even, but you want to make sure that it hits the right way. Sure that stays tucked in there you might need to stop and double check it all right and then once it gets to the end of the mask then it just feeds through the strap right And then you'll do the other, do the exact same thing on the other side. This is the nice stitch that that makes. And then what you do is then just tie a knot in the end of this. And that'll keep your ends from ever fraying or coming apart or anything like that. This is the finished mask and I'm going to show you how to, the best way to put this on. The important thing, this is a sterilized mask already. It's new. It hasn't been used. But you want to make sure that you're not touching the outside of the mask once you've been out wearing it. So he, there, here's the wire. And what you want to do is position it over the bridge of the nose and just kind of pinch it down so that it fits so you don't have gaps under the eyes. If you didn't do this, it would lay like that and air would come up. And if you wear glasses, that's really miserable because then it fogs up your glasses. And then what you do is take the straps and tie it fairly high okay and then stretch out your pleats okay now there's two ways to do these back straps you can tie it just around your neck and tie it here but I find that for for me anyway and for some people it doesn't create a good seal around the chin and it, it can make moving the neck a little hard. So what I do is bring the straps up behind the ears and tie them actually a little higher than even the original one. Because then you can see that creates a good seal around here under the chin. And you wanna make sure that when you fit this thing that you fit it in a way that it's comfortable because once you leave the house in it and you're around people, any viruses will collect on the outside of the mask. So you don't want to be touching it and doing stuff because then what? Then you've contaminated your hands. So if you have to adjust it when you're out somewhere, adjust it using the straps. Don't touch the front of the mask. And then when you get home, you can either put it in a Ziploc bag until you can... Um, do this or just boil it in water and sterilize it right away. So I hope this gives you um, a good way to make a mask and maybe we can get enough of these around the country and help everybody. Thanks.